Hi, this is Lindy. Welcome to my very first Friday Reads. I am um, going to give you just a bit of a status report first on my health. The concussion report is that um, almost all of my symptoms have greatly abated, but I'm still having vision problems and um, a little bit of cognitive delay. Uh, what else? Um, my cast is coming off in 11 more days and if you've watched my earlier videos you probably saw that I've been wearing this red turtleneck underneath other clothes and I thought I'd just show you the reason why I keep wearing the same top is because it was the one that was slit by the um, emergency medical services when they um, needed to access my arm in order to put it in a splint and my plan is to sew up this sleeve um, once I don't have a cast anymore so I can still wear it. So uh, what else? Today is my sister Zan's birthday and so I'm going to be making special cookies for her. I'm going to see her tomorrow and uh, the recipe is called Zan's Birthday Cookies. And it's from Dory Greenspan's book, Dory's Cookies. So that's going to be happening later today. Special cookie making. And uh, let's see, it's currently snowing. Our uh, wind chill right now is minus 36. Um, at the end of this video, I might include just a little shot of my back garden. So you can see what things look like here in Edmonton right now. So on to the report. I have finished three books this week and I bailed on one and I am currently reading a whole bunch. I'll explain that later on. So what I finished, I first I was listening to the audiobook um, of Swamplands. The subtitle is Tundra Beavers, Quaking Bogs and the Improbable World of Peat. It's by Edward Struzik. And if you watched my very first video, I mentioned that I was currently listening to that one and I said that Ed Struzik was a scientist. That was incorrect. And it was my sweetie who caught that um, in her former life of more than 30 years as a journalist and newspaper editor. Uh, she um, worked for a time with Ed Struzik and he is a journalist of science and the environment. And he writes good stuff, really interesting stuff. So um, nature writing is definitely my thing. Um, and all the weird and wonderful aspects of this world that we live in. Um, the, um, the importance of wetlands to uh, our, this planet as a whole for the for the hydrology and for the carbon sequestration sequestration <laughs> it's it, uh, it you know it, it really hits home in this um, audiobook with so much fascinating detail about the rare species that are found in wetlands and um, and how the degradation of peatlands has contributed to uh, things like um, forest fires, for example. Um, a healthy wetland will help to stop a fire, but a degraded wetland can actually accelerate and make a fire hotter. And that was the case in the Horse River Fire in Fort McMurray in Alberta in 2016, when the forestry department had done experiments with draining peatland along the highway. Um, and uh, that's the only road in and out of Fort McMurray. Yeah, disastrous. Uh, but I loved, I love that audiobook. And it was read by um, the actor Christopher Grove. Perfectly adequate. It's 11 hours long, and I highly recommend it. Um, however, there are so many. Uh, destructive things that humans have done um, because for centuries it was believed that wetlands served no purpose whatsoever um, 
and so they were drained so that they could be turned into agricultural land or so that you know other things could be planted there or whatever and um, this has caused a lot of problems and sometimes it was just so depressing that I felt like I think I need to listen to a different audiobook um, just to spell um, you know for my mental health reasons and I decided to pick up Shelter by Jung Yun and uh, I had heard about it because she has a new book out that's called Oh Beautiful and it's been getting a lot of buzz um, and the book that I had access to was this earlier novel Shelter and that one um, has a Korean American uh, central protagonist and it's actually read by a, a Korean American author too, uh, Raymond Lee. Um, one of the little quirks, sometimes with audiobooks, you know, you'll, it's not that it usually bothers me, but I'll notice um, uh, the way that they say things. I'm sure you notice the way I say things with my accent, but anyway, what Raymond Lee does with the word etiquette is he pronounces it etiquette, which I think is kind of cute. Anyway, so the opening scene in Shelter, we've got this uh, Kyung and his wife and their four-year-old son in their house and a realtor has come to give them an estimate so they can put their house on the market. Uh, when it turns out that they owe more than what they could get by selling their house. So financial difficulties, I'm thinking, <laughs> Maybe this is not such a good choice to switch off to. Um, however, the very next scene, so the realtor, they're in the kitchen, the realtor steps to the window and looks out at their back garden, which um, backs on to a shelter belt of trees. And uh, she says, is that a woman? Sure enough, there's a naked woman coming out of the trees into their yard. Uh, she's covered in bruises and it's Kyung's mother so there's a whole story there i was hooked <laughs> i was like okay i'm gonna keep listening and uh, there are some times where this audiobook is uh, quite difficult um, to hear because of the um, terrible things that some of the characters experience there's a lot of violence and um and Kyung himself, he, uh, he's a difficult guy. Um, he's always self-sabotaging and, <laughs> and that can be just so frustrating, um, you know, as a, as a listener, as a reader. But by the midpoint of the book, I could see the possibility for redemption there. And I was so glad that I stuck with it because um, by the end, I really liked this novel. So there's a scene in the book where they're in a police station and they, the elevator doors open and they're in this vestibule and the, it's described this way. Um, it's painted in a strange medicinal shade of pink. Now, I know exactly what color they're talking about because um, this past Sunday, Lori and I went to the Art Gallery of Alberta to see an exhibit called Roy G. Biv. It's all about colors. And there was an art installation there um, that was done by an artist named um, Kapwani Kawanga. And uh, she had used the pink color of uh, Baker Miller pink. And um, I'll include a, a photo that I took at the exhibit, but or Lori took it of me at the exhibit. Um, but if you want to know um, some fascinating information about this paint color, you could go down an internet rabbit hole there. So um, I finished listening to that one, and I also finished an actual book, a print book. Um, you know, I can read a little bit of text. I can read your comments. And I also read Starbird, which is by Sharon King Chang, Chai. Sharon King Chai. She is uh, an Australian, Asian Australian author, but she lives in the in England now. And I heard about this in a best books of the year um, roundup at some point in November. 
when they started doing those things. And uh, there's a lot of silver foil um, uh, aspects, or uh, ink, I guess, or foil is used in the book, so you can see the bird there. And daytime scenes, and then nighttime scenes. Lovely contrast. And in the nighttime scenes, you can look for the moon in each one, and you can look for animals all through the hidden animals here and there. A really fun uh, and beautiful book to share with children. It's a story of the Moon King who has uh, put a a starbird in a cage for his daughter and it's a story about ownership it's a story about freedom a fable absolutely lovely and suitable for all ages and again by serendipity I am currently listening to the Arabian Nights and this is Thanks to my dear friend, Kathy, in Vancouver, who has been reading them to me uh, over Voxer. And the, you know, the flavor of Scheherazade's story is very similar to the story of the starbird. Um, the edition that Kathy is reading is one that is translated by Hussein Hadawi. And I am loving that. There are um, other books that are being read to me. And I'm going to talk a bit more about that at the end of this. Um, I want to tell you about the one book that I bailed on. So this audiobook um, is Gin City by Saad Hossein. And I read the first, um, or listened to the first three chapters in the audiobook. The narration is absolutely fine. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's a fantasy set in Bangladesh, and there are um, magicians and jinns, and I realized that I was not in the reading frame of mind. I wasn't in the right mood for that kind of story. Um, I needed something with more gravity, I think, as opposed to something so escapist. So I didn't last long with that one. Instead, I switched to The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by um, Honoré Fanon Jeffers. And so far, I'm loving it. I'm about three hours in. And um, it's reminding me a little bit of Homegoing by Yaa Jassy, and which reminds me that in hindsight, um, there's something more about that title, Homegoing, um, that I, I don't remember coming across when I read Homegoing. Um, maybe it was there, but in um, the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, there is uh, a funeral, and so now I know that an African American funeral tradition um, is, you know, the celebration is called a homegoing. Yeah. Reading, you know, layers upon layers, it's great. Uh, so also currently reading, well actually it's been set aside on hold um, for when I'm better able to read on my own, Atlas of Poetic Zoology. I mentioned this, I think in my very first video, uh, and Lori was reading it to me. And I mentioned in that video that I had heard about it from uh, Britta, Britta Bowler. And um, actually I've seen a review of it that Heidi of My Reading Life did. So I will link to that down below. Um, I think Heidi and Britta did a buddy read of it. Um, but Lori was finding that she was not so interested in um, the weird and creepy creatures she picked out 
the ones that she was most interested in and read, read me those. Um, but the other ones I'm on my own for. And instead, we've switched to another book that um, suits Lori as a reader much better. And it's also one that is um, coming up for my Lesbian Plus book club. Not to the end of January, but nice to be. Um, we're already halfway through it. Iron Goddess of Mercy by Larissa Lai. This is like one long poem in letters and they're sort of a uh, combination rant and um, love letter. <laughs> uh, kind of reads like uh, slam poetry. Uh, Lori is a poet. She reads this really well. Lori's also a painter, by the way. These paintings in the background, that's her, that's her work. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm just going to read a teeny little bit to you from this, if I can manage it. Um, so you get a feel for, for what I mean about this language. And, um, and the section that I'm reading to you from, I had Lori flag it because on my book blog, I always keep track when I'm reading and I come across a Tim Hortons reference in literature. Uh, so Canadian books, <laughs> there's so many references to Tim Hortons. I think I can probably leave a link. If you're interested in the kind of mentions that Tim Hortons gets um, in Canadian literature, and occasionally American books mention it, Tim Hortons as well. So here we go. Dear Money, Substance of love and sadness, please flow sweet as the same china twice. No dice, though you roll and roll and roll back the rim, the past erupts as doubles and bubbles, taking the pulse of the husk at dusk or two minutes to midnight, etc., etc. It's a long sentence that goes down for the full page, um, but uh, you get the idea. And uh, so that little passage is also going to be on my blog in the future, my next uh, collection of Tim Hortons references. And lastly, currently reading different short story every day and a different excerpt from a novel every day. And that is thanks to Sean the Book Maniac. This project has been going on for two weeks. He's reading to me over Voxer. And uh, we are going to do a video about our experience of this project, so watch for that coming up. And uh, thank you, thank you so much for watching, thank you for subscribing to my channel, and um, I'd love to interact with you. I am reading comments, and um, love to hear from you. So, see you all in the next one. Bye!